get the phone calls. And our Google phone number is 1-620-288-6546. Want to thank the volunteers who are helping us monitor the chat room tonight. Mud Monster, Scotty in Cleveland, and DC Auto Geek. Remember, we'll post the video of this show shortly after this show. You can get the podcast of it at the iTunes store. Just go there tomorrow afternoon. It's free. Just look for AutoLine After Hours. Don't forget you can get this show and all our shows on your smartphone or BlackBerry via Stitcher. You can go to our website, click on the Stitcher logo, and it'll walk you through the paces. And uh, if you put in the promo code AutoLine, you're in line to win 100 bucks. Don't miss the opportunity. And we'll get started here in just a couple of minutes. Driving anything fun? Uh, maybe. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to run out in the parking lot and take a look. So. Uh, no, it's, it's live. So I'll see you probably at the Audi thing. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I got, I'm just going to miss the GM thing. Yeah. Oh, everything's still live, but like we said, at the very top of the hour is when we officially start. And uh, you'll hear, you know, the voice announcement yeah. come on and all that, and then. That's been known to happen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> One minute. Right. Uh, you're a little low, Ben. A little low? Yeah. Way better. I'm looking sharp, Ben. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that hip hop thing you sent. I With you, me, and David Welch. Dancing. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking did somebody horror. do that or did you do that? No, someone in the, the chat room did it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He said 10, <laughs> Auto Line After Hours is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence, Chevrolet, the all-new Chevrolet Cruze. Get used to more. And by Hyundai Elantra, winner of the ALG Residual Value Award two years in a row. Hey, folks, thanks for joining us here on AutoLine After Hours, first show of 2012. Woohoo! Woohoo! And Peter, you're here with me, man. Happy New Year, John. Happy New Year. It's great to be great to back. Be back. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm I'm totally recharged. I, I took I the week off, and uh, whew, I am. I'm ready to go. I was recharged for about ten minutes. Now I'm like <laughs> riding the controls down again. Well, I'll be good until next week, which is when the Detroit Auto Show is, and oh, then I'll man. be totally burned out. I'll be burned to a crisp by the end of the week. Yeah, it does that to you. People don't quite get it, but it's... And we should let the viewers know, too, that we've got uh, Bill Perkins, the co-chair, and Rod Alberts, the executive director of the show, joining us later in this show. Yeah. So we'll be talking all about the Detroit show. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to it, but it is going to wipe me out like it always does. Well, they have lots of good news, uh, pro progress in the Detroit show situation. For a while there, it looked pretty grim, but... Yeah, a few years back, it was a disaster. Yeah. We'll get into that with those guys, yeah. too. But like you said, it's it's all good news these days, or yes. pretty positive news these days. So what do, we, what do you want to talk about first? Well, you know, the, the news that broke today, we saw all the sales figures. Mm -hmm. And uh, wow, what a month. I mean, this is the new normal, right? 
But uh, for the new normal, it was an awfully good month. Yeah, for the new normal, and boy, does America like them some trucks. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, just some incredible amount of uh, trucks, crossovers, SUVs. Uh, what is it, two to one? Or no, it's not that much. Uh, truck sales uh, were a little over 52% of the market. So a little over half are, That's you know, trucks, SUVs. Oh, I know, I know. And, it, and, and growing, growing faster than the past car yes, size. Yes, yes. And yeah, uh, Ford had a phenomenal month with the F Series. The F Series with that uh, EcoBoost. I mean, what a brilliant stroke that was. I remember when. Remember when they did that? They announced it, and everyone was saying, oh, "These guys are dreaming." And they're going to charge a premium for this V6 yeah. <laughs> direct injection turbo. They're dreaming. They're nuts. Now it's uh, what is it over? Uh, 50% of the F-Series? I, I want to say 40% of the F-Series are, are that, and right. And it's growing. And it's growing. And, you know, I was one of the few who didn't scoff at it, but only because Ford had let me drive a test mule a couple of years before it came out. Yeah. And I was just like, wow, wow. And this was before they had all the final calibration. And I told them, if you can just change the exhaust note a bit, uh, you could fool most people into believing there's a V8 under the hood just because of the performance. Well, the way they can do that now with the exhaust systems, you know, they should do that. Well, they did. I mean, they... I mean, uh, they should do a little more. <laughs> right. Tweak it a little. Right. Pump in V8 sound through yeah. the speakers. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, car sales were pretty interesting as to what was going on. Uh, Pretty much everyone did well, except for the one that we've been talking about for a couple of years now, Honda. Honda was off, and they were off by a lot. So uh, I don't know what's going on. Well, it's, you know, this mojo thing, it's hard to put your finger on it, but when it starts going down, it's hard to pull back on it. And it, it's, I think, very alarming for them because Toyota didn't have that problem. Its sales were essentially flat, but for them these days, flat's really good. Flat for the year is... And, Pretty amazing for Toyota. And Camry had a really good month last yeah. month. So uh, Toyota seemingly has figured out what to do here, but Honda has not. Yeah, well, their Honda's image has taken a hit, and the buzz is negative, and they aren't breaking out of it. Now, they're thinking they're going to do that at Detroit show, but we'll see. Right. Yeah, I don't know about that. And the, the Europeans, oh, my gosh. The battle between BMW and Mercedes in the luxury segment was pretty spectacular. And what was also amazing is how neither one of them wanted to release final sales until the other did right. because they wanted to be able to claim number one, uh, the number one slot in the luxury segment, plus, having displaced Lexus. Plus they were closing deals on the 3rd that counts for the end of the year. What, the 3rd of January, yeah. you mean? Yeah. yeah, they count to the end. So they were doing... So it took uh, all day, Tuesday and Wednesday, just to figure out how many last-minute deals they had. On how much the they wanted to cheat. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's what it is. Come on. I mean, geez. Well, BMW really pulled it out at the end. So. But Mercedes, the last two months of the year, oh, my God. I think they were up 40 and 50%. It was staggering, no, staggering. Like huge incentives, huge hmm. people who had Mercedes and were thinking of, Trading, you know, they drove by the showrooms and the GPS would direct them into the showroom and they, they'd say, how much, how many lease payments do you have? Oh, well, that's good. We'll just forget about those. Come on in and take a new one. Right. So we can get it over the curb. I mean. But uh, Volkswagen had a blowout month. Audi had a blowout month. Porsche was down. That was interesting. I don't know what's going on there, but, uh, you know, their numbers are small enough that if a boat comes in late, their sales yeah. uh, numbers get all skewed. Plus, you know, end of year, of course, is kind of quiet, and then it starts to pick up again, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, all in all, I thought the sales numbers were very promising to end the year with that kind of momentum. Bodes well for this year. And they still, there's still that pent-up demand figure that keeps seems to grow, you know. I think... Uh, I think 2012 is going to be a progressively good year. I mean, I, I think it's just going to keep getting better and better. Right. So. As long as the Eurozone doesn't melt down or as, as long, long as, as the Straits of Hormuz <laughs> aren't shut down. And as long as, you know, there is that big meteor over the shoulder of <laughs> right. Saturn that sort of, you know. That's exactly right. Sure, maybe June. Right. 
So if the world doesn't come to an end, it ought to be a good year. Yeah. Hey, another thing, uh, Hyundai got a new car designer, a guy named Chris Chapman. Christopher Chapman, I think I got that right. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know who this guy is or anything about him, though, do you? I don't know either, but they are spending the money on design, and it's showing mm -hmm. in their products, and that's what they needed to do. And, uh, you know, I got called about that they're, they're going to do a, there's something that they're doing with the Genesis with Prada. And really? I think they're getting ahead of themselves on that, you know. The, I don't know. It was a, there's a rumor that they're going to have a Prada edition of the Genesis. I, I think they're getting a little ahead of themselves. And. Maybe. I, you know, I could see where they would want to, and, and you've you got to be talking to Genesis sedans, not yeah, the coupe. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, clearly, you know, Hyundai's taken huge steps, but as it uses the Genesis and the Equus to try to get into the more premium or luxury part of the segment, the Hyundai brand name ain't quite there yet. Well, so I could see why you'd want to align yourself with a Prada. Well, I, I get that, but see, there. The Koreans are never happy with where they are. In some respects, that's good. In other respects, it gets them into trouble. Now, they should be very happy that this Hyundai Kia is on an upward trajectory, and the American consumer is, it's, it's on their consideration list, big time. And they should work with that a little while, you know? But th that's not the Korean way. They're just like, okay, we have the Equus out, we've, we've did that, now we're gonna do something else. I mean, they, they need to focus on really growing this consideration of the Hyundai Kia. Mm -hmm. The only way you do that is by great products and not try to get ahead of yourselves. Mm -hmm. Try to be something they're not. Right, right. So, I mean, because what, the Equus hasn't really done, no. I mean, they never plan to do, sell many of them, but still, it hasn't transformed the brand. No, it hasn't. Neither has the Genesis. I mean, the, the sales numbers are, are pretty slow, are pretty low with the, and that, and they don't break out the coupe, so we don't know, yeah. you know, how much sales is the sedan and how much is the coupe. Yeah. So. What else? It's the intros next week. The, the new car intros at mm -hmm. the Detroit show. Dodge Dart, huge for Chrysler. Right. Um, Chrysler sales numbers were hot. I mean, if Jeeps were red hot. Jeep Grand Cherokee, they did 17,000 units last it's month. Great that's it's that's great big. big. That's huge. They're so yeah, the, but they have not had a car that had a 40 mile per gallon highway sticker on it. So they got, what, another 5%? Five, five right, the government said, okay, you bring that car out, you can buy another 5% of Chrysler. So Fiat owns? 58.5%, I think now, is the number Yeah, and the right rest now. is owned by the UAW. Right, right. So, so that's uh, a huge deal. Dodge Dart's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Mopar has got a couple of big intros at the show. A uh, couple of special editions. They're not going to show unless they're going to be a surprise of the uh, Viper concept. Mm. That could be a surprise. That would be cool. That but, would be really but cool. But we don't know if that's going to happen. That would be, if, right. if I were Sergio, I would have a Viper concept. But they're going to show the Maserati, Kubang. But they already showed that. Yeah, they already Paris, showed that. So. so, you know. But the Dart is, the Dart's the thing for Chrysler. For Chrysler. Ford, big show for Ford, Oh, man, too. huge. I think people are going to be shocked at the new uh, Fusion. It's quite a stunning design statement. I think it will be the design statement in that segment. It will pretty much rewrite that segment. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be so, have such a visual statement was such a tremendously equipped that it's going to really, it's really going to. Well, I would say the front three quarters of the car is the best midsize sedan in the business. Oh, yeah, clearly. When I look at the rear three quarter, though, there, it's busy. There's some lines yeah. and. I didn't think they resolved that quite as well. But, you know, I think as, as just auto enthusiasts driving around, that front view coming at you on the road, that's the whole deal right there. And <laughs> right. in that respect, the Fusion's red hot. Uh, they're going to show the directional design statement for Lincoln, which is going to be very Well, cool. they're going to show the MKZ. Well, the concept. Oh, really? Yeah. This is not the production car? No. Oh. Now, the concept might be quite a bit like the production car. Yeah, they're not right. saying. It'll have 22 inch wheels. And they'll, uh, but that's going to be, that's a wow. Trust me on that, folks. That's a wow. That's going to be. Well, wild. you and I have been talking about that. This, 
if, if the MKZ is a signal of where the rest of the Lincoln line is going, yes. the comp competition better watch out. Yeah, Lincoln will definitely be on an upward trajectory. And they're doing it the right way. They're keeping their heads down. They're not promising anything. You know, not to knock the GM folk because, yeah, I was kidding the other day with the guys. I mean, the ATS is going to be a very nice product. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. But their mistake, and I put it on the website, is they raised their hands and said, we're going after the 3 Series BMW. Now, if you want to say that internally, say it internally. Everyone should have a target. But the moment you say that in public, then all of a sudden, it's like, <laughs> okay, but, but like we said, the net net, the reviews will say, it's a very nice car, but it ain't no 3 Series. Right. You know, they could have eliminated that. It would be better if they never said that than the media said, surprisingly competitive with the 3 Series. That's There's right. a difference. There's a big difference. And right. so GM, I mean, they just, they didn't think that through, and that's going to bite them in the ass. I, I agree. I agree. Big, big show for the Japanese, too. Toyota, Honda, Nissan uh, bringing a lot of ammunition to Detroit. Right. And, the, well, Acura is going to try to change our perception of Acura. I've seen uh, the new front end styling on the TL. Right. It's better. It's better, but it's uh, it's clearly a refresh. You know, I think they're they're still locked into hard points and dimensions that do not give the designers free reign. So it's an improvement. I don't think it gets them there, but it's a step in the right direction. And what about Toyota? What are you? Toyota is going to have a, a plug-in concept, the FS4 or something like yeah, that. Yeah. I left my notes in the other room. I'm going to have to run in there and go get them. <laughs> but, uh, hey, yeah, this is, uh, you know, look, uh, what I find fascinating is Toyota, Honda, Nissan are putting far more effort into the Detroit show than they put into L.A. And L.A. is kind of their home base not only for their headquarters in North America, but also so many of their consumers, their customers are out there. Yeah. But it's interesting to see how much effort they're putting into this show. Well, it's clear that the Detroit show, if there was a, a lull, the lull is over with. The Detroit show has sort of reasserted its its prominence in the global stage. I, mean, I think so. And I, Because I think, you know, the Europeans definitely want to do a big show here. I mean, Mercedes is going to show the new SL. Mm -hmm. BMW showing the new three here. Yeah, first time. Right. In public, well, at least on U.S. soil. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, they we've seen the SL mm -hmm. pictures, but it doesn't. You, you always have to wait and see it in person. Right. Yeah, the Toyota. The Chip got me my notes. Thank you, Chip. Uh, the NS4 plug-in concept. Nissan's unveiling the new Pathfinder here, so that's going to be important for them. Uh, it, it best be good, or they they don't have much. Beyond. Or, or yeah, or go away. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then supposedly uh, uh, an Accord Coupe concept, which is when Honda shows a concept, that's it. That, that's it. But I think they may have shown that in Tokyo. I'm not sure. I'll have to wait until I see the car if that's it. And Porsche is going to show us the official unveiling of the nine, the new 911 Cabriolet. Mm -hmm. They showed the new 911 before, but uh, this will be the Cabriolet. So. When's the baby Cayenne coming? Do you know? That's uh, late 2013. Oh, is it? Okay. Based on the Q5. Right, I believe so, right. The, yeah, the yeah. The Cayune. <laughs> Spelled like Cajun to me, but <laughs> all the Germans, when I d drove the 911, they were said Cayune. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, wait till it gets here. Yeah. <laughs> we ain't going to call it that. Hey, uh, let's get our two guests up here now. and. Do well, we, we have to? Yeah, we got to. We invited them here and they showed up. They showed up. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> but uh, while we do that, uh, why don't we give a shout out to our friends at Bridgestone for being such great sponsors on the show. Look at this. Bridgestone's using natural rubber, researching ways to enhance its quality and performance, and making their factories more environmentally friendly. Producing products that save on fuel and emissions, and some that can be reused again. And promoting eco-friendly and safety driving campaigns. One team, one planet. Bridgestone.
Michael Andretti on The Apprentice? Are you kidding me? No. Yes. No. Oh. Uh, yes, well, that was just announced. It's like, Michael, really? He, he's going to get fired fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of shocking to me. All right. Well, hey, we've got our uh, two guests here. Bill Perkins, the, the co-chair. No, chair. Chair. Excuse me. Let's get that right. Let's not, not you know, diminish the, the position here. <laughs> and, you, and, and Rod Alberts, too, the executive director of um, the... And, and yes. Uh, for 20 years now, I've been here for a lifetime. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, <laughs> great having the both of you on uh, Autoline After Hours. Yes. Thanks Thanks a lot. Welcome. Uh, yeah. Upward trajectory of the Detroit show. It's good to see. Really yeah, is. Good timing. I'm glad you didn't have me on two years ago. You know, there was a Yeah, we would have been home. Well, you know, hey, the city was going through things now. A lot of city, city still going through yeah, things, right, but, right, right. but now they're not going okay. after Cobo Hall, well, out Cobo Center. I think the major thing was uh, putting Cobo Hall under in charge of a regional thing. That was a huge difference, right? Well, they've done a good job, you yeah. know, the authority, and uh, we're very pleased with the direction that Cobo is uh, taking and uh, some of the improvements they're making. So, um, and you've got a bunch more to come, mm -hmm. too. Well, we feel real good about it, and we feel the direction that they're taking will do nothing but um, allow us to continue to expand our show. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, let, let, let's talk uh, a little bit more uh, about that. Uh, it's got to be great having that regional authority running it because the two prior managers are in jail, right, for all the you, kickbacks and you corruption. You'll believe this, but all my Christmas cards I send about a half go to, to Jackson and, and uh, <laughs> yeah, Jackson like Prison, from, right? Uh, you know, from uh, Cobo before. <laughs> no, <laughs> but you, you know what? It did make all the difference. Just a little bit uh, having an authority built into it that uh, did it for the right reasons instead of having uh, the situation we had, where there was an opportunity for the kind of trouble in Cobo Hall, and. Uh, I'm not going to name names, but it just there's a lot of things that uh, over a ten year period that just got out of hand. But it's all different now. What about I can't believe how it cleaned up in two years. What, what about the costs though? Because that was always the biggest complaint I got from out of town car companies right. saying I, Detroit they said was the most expensive auto show in the world on a per square footage basis for them. You know we'd, we'd travel to to Germany and to other shows around the world, uh, we'd hear the same thing from the OEMs because we deal with the manufacturers, not in North America, but we deal with them in their home, wherever they're from. And you're exactly right. They were saying compared to Tokyo Motor Show and other shows, we were too much per square meter, not per square foot. You know how that goes. Uh, but in the end, uh, what we found out is a lot of it had to do with the efficiencies in the building. We just had to make sure the dock doors and all the access that you really don't see from an outsider looking in what's going on and what it takes to put a, a show on in a venue. It takes an international facility. And we were 30 years behind. Uh, all these new ones going up all over, even in the U.S. And here we were competing with that. But in the end, and it, and it just took, a, everybody had different ideas. You know how this goes in the city? Uh, Bob Ficano had, you know, grandiose ideas. But in the end, you know, we didn't get that, but we got something good, and he helped start that process. So mm -hmm. everybody had their play into it. And what we have coming through in the next two years, three years, and even this year, has made a difference for exhibitors and the cost of what they're, they're doing and, and putting in. They can put in more now spend the same amount of money if they like, but put more in the show. Right. So ingress and egress for the actual logistical aspect of the show is dramatically improved. Well, think about it just from a, uh, they call it doctor. I know that's the, the, the terms they, they use. And you come in, if you have a truck, they all have to line up behind one dock door. Uh, how many crews can you have on the show floor? Mm -hmm. If you have 30 dock doors, you can do things all at one time and, and have things in a more efficient manner, not have overtime, et cetera. Um, when you're talking million dollar displays and the investments going into it and the time two months move in that's a lot of that's a lot a of lot dough a lot of dough it's a lot of dough and as you guys know it all came to crunch time over the christmas holidays and then you had to pay double and triple time to get this all done in time right. and bill got in there and he said you know what well, you got to fix this yeah. you know right bill <laughs> well you, you know rod mentioned something a while ago i mean in our travels to the various shows the oems they said exactly what you said they said your show's too expensive we've, we've got to cut back and we went back to um, uh, the people at Kobo, um, the companies, and um, you know we relayed this to them. Mm -hmm. And they had meetings with the unions, and the unions gave us a few concessions. Um, and I think that has helped. Now they're becoming more efficient. You know, we were able to we able to put the show on. Uh, the lead time has cut down quite a bit, and and I think that that is the thing that 
is saving them money. You know, one thing I can say we, we pride ourselves in is we, uh, and it's not a tough duty, it's probably I should do this more at home, you know, with my wife. <laughs> but you know, when, when, they, when they ask something of us, and I'm even saying media, we'll listen and try to accommodate because you're a customer of the show. Mm -hmm. OEM's the same way, the manufacturers. When we meet with them, if we can find a way to make it work, why wait till the day and make it more difficult at the show and, and then angst all over the board? Uh, we had a situation with electric, electric this year, last year, and we took a trip to Germany, Yes. met with the manufacturers, took somebody over with us to do pre-approvals, so when they walked in the show this year, because you know their plugs are different than our plugs, that we had no problem. Uh, it's not so complicated if you plan ahead. I, I know it sounds odd, but uh, you just have to listen and try to get things done. Wouldn't you agree? We, you and I did well, it together. Well, I agree 100%. I think that um, we do a good job of listening to, quote unquote, the customer. And uh, I think it has paid off for us. I think uh, this year you will see, um, you will be impressed by the displays that you see. The uh, manufacturers, you can tell that the business is starting to come back because some of the displays are just over the top. Mm -hmm. and, uh, They're I, really spending the money in it. Oh, oh yes. God. I mean, wait till you see it, John. You, you, will, you will even be surprised. You'll say, oh, wow, look at that. I don't want to mention anything because <laughs> I don't want to give it away, but uh, there's some displays that uh, are over the top. Think about look at what's happened the last three years. Um, it, when, I, when I had a floor plan that we ran with, and I've been doing this 20 years, and I remember doing it on a light board at one time, but it's a whole different game now, by the way. <laughs> and the evolution of a floor plan, um, the consolidations. I remember when we had all the GM and Ford product that were spread on the floor, and then they consolidated. Remember that 10 years uh -huh. ago, 12. Then suddenly the brands are moving out. They're selling. They're they're uh, some are going to you know they're not there anymore. So the landscape changed dramatically. And now I call it kind of the the back. Uh, we're on the back of the track, and the rain's clearing, and people are coming around that corner, and they got to put their best stuff out this year. It's time to shine, uh -huh. and this is their moment, and they're putting everything into it to make it work. With all 5,000 media from 50, 60 countries, you can't afford not to be there with the, the right image and what you're going to do with the brands you have and the product. That's right. And to what you were saying before, you know, we in the media and the automakers all travel around the world to all these different shows, so it's real easy to compare one to the other. Yeah. Yeah. Very easy. What, um, one of the renderings of Kobo had the big expanse looking onto the river. When will that be done? Two years down the road. And that's going to be... No, that's phase well, three. That's the end of of phase three and that's kind of like the final piece. Right now they're redoing Cobo Arena and uh, that's the new um, um, atrium right. entryway and it'll be three stories all glass. Is that three or four? Yeah, but you know what I'm, what I'm hearing, not that for the, for the show coming up, but 2013. Right, two years down the road. They're going to have, that'll be a year and a half away, that's not that, or a year and a month. What? You're in a week. What am yeah. I saying? Wait, let's get that down here, right? It's a year away. It's a year away. Okay, yeah. So but that view of the river will be part of it next year. It'll be it'll be open, be and you'll have more now. meeting rooms, and there will be other things coming later. But uh, visually, this year's more of the the uh, efficiencies of the building mm -hmm. and the little add-on in the back, which mm -hmm. is a very big deal, close to the arena, Joe Louis Arena. And the uh, next year is going to be more visual aesthetics. Well, I tell you, that animation that they did, that fly-through, CAD fly-through, is awesome. It really shows off what this place is going to look like. I was blown away. I, I thought it was a very smart idea to spend the money to do that animation because, and anyone who wants to see what I'm talking about, just go online, do a search, you know, new Kobo Hall fly-through or something. It, it's not hard to find it, and it, it's just a few minute long video, but like I grab it's really cool. And sometimes just yeah. watch it, I mean, I go by myself, you know, it's weird. Is that strange? <laughs> but you guys must have a real problem, too, with everybody coming back. I mean, Nissan had dropped out of the show for a couple of years, they're coming back. Porsche had dropped out, they're coming back. Uh, it, it's gotta be a pain in the neck to try to schedule everybody and find all the floor space for them. That's what we're here for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you know, That's the name of the game. The, 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 you know, there's a lot of shows. I got to be careful here, but a lot of shows, because they don't want to go through the process, will just they'll listen and then they just throw it out there and then go to Florida for a week and wait to see what how if the, the smoke clears. And you got to be careful with that. If you handhold, you have to listen to to the the complaints, but you handhold and make every, everybody 80 percent happy, and then you're okay. If you make everybody 100%, if somebody 100% happy, you got somebody else who's not very happy at all. Mm -hmm. But in the end, as long as you're trying to accommodate and you show good faith that you're you're making an effort to do the right thing for all in an equal basis, mm -hmm. and with 50 brands, everybody's got their own gig going, you know, and they want to they want to get their their best opportunity out there. So 
we listen to everybody and we take the time. How many, how many meetings have you been in, Bill? I've been in a lot of meetings. A lot of meetings and a lot of requests. And, you know, you can't lead them on. If you can do it, you do it. If you can't do it, you tell them you can't do it and tell them why. You know, if they understand that, sometimes they don't want to accept it. And if we can find a way to compromise, we usually do. Can I, can I tell on you a little bit, though? Yeah, go ahead. So we're in a meeting in uh, <laughs> somewhere over, overseas. <laughs> oh, so you know you're not going to. And we're in a meeting with, with Saab. And, you know, of course, I'm trying to work it all through a little bit. And Bill just comes right out. He's, he's like the, the fortune teller. He knows where things are going. He goes, you just laid it out to him. I thought, Bill, you just you blew him out of the water. They're not even around now very much, are they? Is it gonna, are they coming around? No, they're, uh, Peter and I have been talking about this for a couple of years. Yeah. They're, they're not gonna make it. Yeah. You know, like we've said. Only it, see Bill News. They're, they're running around and they're running, you know, raising, you know, 40 million euros here and 60 million euros there. And what we've said all along is they need a billion euros every year for the next five years. Then maybe they have a fighting chance. Right. And that just never happened. And. Uh, so it's sad to see somebody will go in and buy up all the assets, yeah. but it's, it's too, Saab as we know it is done. Yeah. That's my opinion. We hate seeing that happen because it was nice, uh, the good product and. Uh, yeah, no, it's a shame. I mean, uh, they got some good-looking cars out right now, but mm -hmm. it, it's over, I think. But only Bill knew. Yeah. <laughs> March of last year.